Thank you very much for the uh, kind uh, introduction. Uh, this has been an outstanding um, meeting today, so congratulations, David, and uh, co-organizers. And um, it's a real privilege to um, uh, learn from the, the pioneers of um, um, BPD. So I was tasked uh, to give you an overview of um, cell-based uh, therapies for um, um, BPD without touching too much on the most promising cell, because Stella Kurimbanas will tell us what they uh, can uh, all do. So um, previous speakers have uh, um, illustrated uh, very nicely um, the problem of um, BPD uh, over time. And uh, BPD is basically now a ransom of uh, the success that we have in um, keeping these um, babies alive. So now we have, um, uh, it is, becomes more difficult to protect the preterm lung uh, from um, injury. And we have also learned that it is a multifactorial disease uh, that uh, interrupts normal lung development uh, while the developing lung is trying to um, grow and, uh, and repair. And um, so when you look at the multifactorial uh, um, disease uh, path pathogenesis, uh, it becomes uh, clear that um, um, classical pharmacological therapies um, will not uh, make a dent on this um, uh, disease. And uh, what we really need is a game changer similar to um, surfactant for RDS or nitric oxide uh, for pulmonary hypertension. So cells have uh, very interesting um, attributes uh, that uh, may actually help us in tackling the problem of um, um, BPD. Because cells, unlike um, um, classical pharmacological drugs, can move to the sites of injury and uh, monitor the environment, interact with the cells, and then depending on the signals they receive, they could modulate the repair process. And um, in order to um, show you the excitement that uh, there is around these um, cells, and uh, since it's a birthday symposium, uh, I will um, use the founder of uh, some special iPhone uh, that was discovered exactly 10 years ago, not too far from here, to illustrate that excitement. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. And Apple has been, well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. In 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. It didn't just change Apple. It changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't just, it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. So today, I'm going to introduce three <laughs> revolutionary cell-based therapy for BPD. Mesenchymal stromal cells that are very potent anti-inflammatory cells, endothelial progenitor cells that have the capacity to be pro-angiogenic, and we have seen uh, the pulmonary vascular disease that occurs in um, some of the BPD infants, and then finally induced pluripotent stem cells that are embryonic-like stem cells that can, are patient-specific. The importance, besides the hype uh, around the stem cells, is that you have to know the cell that you're working with. So stem cells are defined by two characteristics. One. Uh, they have the ability um, to divide for indefinite periods, often throughout the life of the organism. 
and they have this ability uh, so to self-replicate. And uh, this is an important um, phenomenon because uh, one can see that um, uh, as we age or uh, during disease process, uh, if this um, process is interrupted, you can have stem cell exhaustion. And this could be one um, mechanism uh, that uh, contributes to, to BPD. Under certain circumstances, these cells can differentiate and become uh, any type of cell, depending on the level of uh, potency. And it is this um, faculty uh, that uh, investigators uh, thought to harness uh, to um, prevent or rescue organ injury. The potency uh, determines how uh, efficient the cell is able to differentiate. So uh, the zygote is totipotent because it can give rise to all the cells, including the placenta. Embryonic stem cells that we can um, obtain from the inner cell mass of the blastocyst are pluripotent because they can give uh, rise to any um, type of cell. And then as these cells uh, differentiate, uh, they lose some of their potency. Adult stem cells, for example, are multipotent. Um, one of the best known examples is the hematopoietic stem cell that can give rise to all the, um, the blood cells. And next um, to um, these uh, hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow, the mesenchymal stromal cells has been described as an important niche cell uh, for these hematopoietic stem cells. And these cells have been um, described uh, through the minimal uh, criteria uh, um, set forward by the um, International Society for Cellular Therapy. They are multipotent because they can give rise to um, fat, cartilage, and bone. They're plastic adherent and express uh, certain cell surface markers. So these are the minimal criteria that allow us between labs to evaluate whether we work approximately with the same um, kind of cells. I just shaved off five minutes from your presentation. <laughs> and um, the interesting um, hallmark of these um, uh, mesenchymal stromal cells is that besides being potent, uh, important niche cells for these hematopoietic stem cells, these are potent uh, repair cells that have pleiotropic effect. And immediately, you can recognize from this schematic uh, the many mechanisms that uh, this cell can tackle to prevent uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And uh, Stella Corimbanas will tell you uh, much more about how these cells uh, work and how we can um, potentially um, use them. Here, I will just show you a meta-analysis and systematic review of all um, preclinical studies that have tested mesenchymal stromal cells in experimental BPD. Uh, over a thousand records were um, screened. Uh, 25 studies in the end qualified uh, for um, review. And uh, this uh, just shows uh, one um, forest plot uh, showing the efficacy of uh, mesenchymal stromal cells on lung alveolarization. And uh, you can see that uh, almost in all studies, except for the studies when MSCs were given intranasally, uh, these uh, mesenchymal stromal cells were efficient in um, uh, preventing or rescuing uh, the lung structure. One important uh, message uh, from this, uh, these studies is that um, uh, there was uh, enormous risk of bias in these um, preclinical studies. So ideally, those uh, boxes should all be uh, uh, green for low risk of bias. Um, but there are um, many limitations in these preclinical studies suggesting that experimental design and reporting of these um, um, studies should follow uh, more rigorous um, standards. And these have been uh, set forward, for example, here in the ARRIVE guidelines. Another interesting aspect um, was that amongst all those studies, the only animal model <coughs> that was used was um, oxygen exposure in neonatal rodents. And we know uh, uh, latest since this afternoon that uh, mice and uh, rats uh, will not tell us anything about BPD. 
So we had the uh, great um, fortune to work on a very clinically uh, rele uh, relevant animal model uh, in uh, San Antonio, Texas, together with um, Steve Zeidner and his team. And um, this preterm chronically ventilated baboon model is really unique. Uh, these are um, uh, preterm baboons uh, delivered by a C-section after antenatal steroids, intubated, received surfactant, and then ventilated for um, two weeks. This is the closest you can get um, to uh, mimicking uh, the clinical um, BPD. So these um, are very preliminary data uh, where we uh, administered human cord uh, derived mesenchymal stromal cells intravenously to these um, animals at birth. And uh, they behave very, very much like um, uh, extreme preterm babies uh, born after a cold C-section with hemodynamic instability in the first week of life. And here you can see how uh, control animals needed um, either uh, um, volume or um, inotropes and one even hydrocortisone uh, to maintain uh, appropriate blood pressure. Whereas in the five animals that were treated with intravenous mesenchymal stromal cells, there was none of this um, hemodynamic um, instability. Likewise, when we look at the oxygenation index or ventilation index uh, in these um, uh, baboons, uh, IV mesenchymal stromal um, cell therapy uh, seemed to improve oxygenation index and ventilation index um, over time. Here, this is a very important slide because it shows that unlike in the rodent model of BPD, where we have homogeneous uh, simplified alveoli, in this preterm baboon model, we have something that looks probably more like the human BPD uh, with uh, three histological um, um, patterns. And uh, in this particular case, uh, I think lung stereology is the only way to uh, reliably and rigorously quantify uh, lung um, histology and whether our therapies have actually um, any impact. So again, very uh, preliminary data uh, in two animals seem to um, show improved lung structure in MSC-treated um, animals. Uh, here, uh, these uh, also preliminary data show attenuation of uh, lung fibrosis with mesenchymal, mesenchymal stromal cell therapy and uh, improvement in um, elastin content, uh, which, as uh, Dick showed uh, previously, is important for normal alveolarization. So this animal model is uh, very useful, and we hope that we will be able to compare also uh, whether IV or intratracheal therapy uh, is um, uh, successful in preventing the lung injury. The pleiotropic effect of these uh, MSCs suggests that they may also be helpful for other complications of prematurity characterized by um, inflammation. Uh, here, uh, we show that uh, in the oxygen-induced BPD model, but also in mechanically ventilated uh, mice, uh, when we isolate um, neuroprogenitor cells uh, in the periventricular zone, these um, uh, function of these neuroprogenitor cells is uh, perturbed which could um, partially explain why uh, severe BPD is an uh, independent risk factor for adverse neurodevelopmental outcome. And again, in very preliminary data in the ventilated uh, mice, um, these data suggest that mesenchymal stromal cells can uh, protect uh, neuroprogenitor cells. Likewise, in a sepsis model, uh, induced with um, Escherichia coli in uh, newborn rats, uh, administration of cord-derived, human cord-derived mesenchymal stromal cells improved survival, accelerated or facilitated bacterial clearance, and this was uh, in part uh, due to uh, higher secretion of antimicrobial factors such as LL37. So the message here is that these MSCs are potent uh, anti-inflammatory cells that, unlike steroids, may actually protect the brain and uh, be um, helpful uh, in sepsis.
We heard um, that uh, there's a subset of patients in BPD that uh, are at risk of pulmonary vascular disease, and maybe over time we'll define an inflammatory and a vascular phenotype of BPD. And for these patients, endothelial progenitor cells um, may um, be helpful in promoting um, lung angiogenesis and attenuating pulmonary hypertension. Here, this, um, the rationale is based on the, um, these um, PRINCEP studies by um, Steve Abman, showing that if you inhibit angiogenesis, you get a rest in alveolar development, suggesting the importance of blood vessels for normal lung growth. Here we again had the opportunity to collaborate with Merv Yoder in Indianapolis, who had described the presence of endothelial progenitor cells in human umbilical cord blood. But he also made sense of uh, some of the discrepancy in the literature in the literature around endothelial progenitor cells. And depending on how you grow and culture these cells, you may end up with three different types of endothelial progenitor cells. And Merv was very interested in these um, late outgrowth endothelial progenitor cells or endothelial colony forming cells, because these cells form colonies after uh, one to three weeks in culture. And uh, when he painstakingly does these um, single cell culture experiments where he plates the cell at the single cell culture level, he was able to show that uh, there is amongst these cells a hierarchy similar to hematopoietic stem cell um, where um, he was able to identify cells that were able to give rise uh, to zero cells or to smaller clusters, low proliferative potential ECFC, or higher clusters uh, with high proliferative potential ECFCs. Also, these cells were capable of forming uh, new um, blood vessels, which the other cells, the early outgrowth EPCs, were not capable of, suggesting that these endothelial colony forming cells are the ones that fulfill the stringent criteria of a stem progenitor cell which doesn't mean that these other early outgrowth EPCs are not important for um, angiogenesis. On the contrary, uh, they have already been used um, uh, or they are already in, in, in clinical trials. So the new nomenclature suggests that these early outgrowth EPCs in the blue uh, rectangle should be called myeloid angiogenic cells or MAC and uh, the red cells in the, the red rectangle cells, the endothelial colony forming cells. And um, we're interested in seeing whether these um, ECFCs exist in the developing lung. So we showed that in the developing rat and human lung, these cells can be isolated. They um, display an endothelial cell um, phenotype based on their cobblestone-like structure, their um, cell surface markers, the ability to form endothelial network on matrigel, and uh, also uh, to um, be stained with ulex lectin and take up ACLDL. More importantly, when we plate these cells at the single cell level, we're able to find the same EPC hierarchy than Merv Yoder had described with umbilical cord blood derived cells. And uh, there are some cells that fall in the category of these um, high proliferative uh, potential cells. And these high proliferative potential cell um, um, colony is almost wiped out when we expose these cells, uh, the human cells, to hyperoxia or if we isolate these cells from the O2-BPD model, suggesting uh, that um, there is a dysfunction of these lung resident endothelial progenitor cells. And uh, also when we uh, implant these cells under the capsule, uh, under the skin of uh, mice, uh, these cells are capable of forming blood vessels that then connect with the host uh, vasculature. But the dysfunction of these resident lung ECFCs form the rationale for uh, proposing uh, co human cord blood derived ECFCs as a, as a therapeutic um, uh, cell in uh, a BPD model or here we chose a neonatal monocrotaline model that was described for the first time by um, Marlene Rabinovich a few years ago. 
And uh, this model is uh, very robust, uh, where you give a single dose of monocrotaline at day six. Uh, you can see the dramatic uh, decrease in IVRization, also in lung vessel density. And the administration of endothelial colony forming cells, either the prevention or a rescue strategy, uh, would uh, promote, uh, prevent, or restore lung vessel density. Likewise, when we look at um, equidoppler parameters of POMI hypertension, uh, or if we look at right ventricular hypertrophy and medial wall thickness, uh, there was a massive um, signs of POMI hypertension in this monocrotaline model. And uh, human cord blood-derived ECFCs were able to either prevent or reverse these um, changes. But uh, contrary to um, the mechanism of action of these, these cells, or what we thought how they would uh, act, uh, we could not see uh, many of these cells engrafted in, in the lung. And the, either by um, looking at the fluorescent cells or looking for um, human allo sequences over time, you can see that very rapidly these cells disappear um, from the human lung, suggesting that, uh, like um, uh, for mesenchymal stromal cells, the effect of these cells is not through engraftment, but uh, through a paracrine effect. And we will hear more about this uh, from um, Stella Corimbanas. And um, here we performed these experiments where we took the cell free conditioned media and injected the cell-free conditioned media of these ECFCs into the same animal model, and we could see the same therapeutic benefit uh, that uh, we obtained with uh, whole cell um, uh, therapy. And uh, Chris Baker from Denver uh, did similar experiments in the bleomycin-induced model where he was able to show, uh, first in vitro, that these uh, ECFC conditioned media promotes angiogenesis and that it, it, it attenuates bleomycin-induced uh, right ventricular hypertrophy. However, there was no benefit on lung architecture. And the last piece of data for these endothelial progenitor cells shows that these um, myeloid angiogenic cells, or here uh, called bone marrow-derived uh, angiogenic cells, uh, also have uh, therapeutic uh, potential in uh, newborn mice exposed to um, hyperoxia. And you will see why this is important uh, in the final discussion. So uh, the third revolutionary cell therapy uh, is very recent. These are induced uh, pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs. Uh, these... Um, uh, cells can be isolated from either the skin or like, generated from the skin or blood cells. Uh, they can be reprogrammed using the Yamanaka factors that Dick Blend mentioned at some uh, point uh, to turn these uh, mature, originally mature cells into embryonic-like uh, stem cells, except that now they come from uh, a, pa a specific patient or from you and I. And these cells then can be turned into a variety of cell types, and uh, investigators have been very efficient in differentiating these cells into cardiomyocytes or uh, neurons. I'll, and then these cells can be used for either cell replacement therapy, for disease modeling, or drug screening. And of course, the more difficult the cell is to get, uh, the I think the more important is this, this technique. So our goal was to isolate cells from um, um, babies, turn them into induced pluripotent stem cells, and then derive them into alveolar type 2 cell because there's some alveolar type 2 cell injury uh, in um, um, BPD, but one could also think about other um, diseases in which this um, cell could be uh, interesting. So here we're able to use uh, uh, differentiation protocols that were um, published already in the literature to um, differentiate these cells along the um, definitive endoderm. Um, then over time, uh, we see appearance of uh, more distal um, lung cell markers. And then during the maturation phase around day 25 to 35, we're able to see alveolar type 2 cell markers and uh, depending how you sort out these cells, 
you can um, obtain a high percentage of um, alveolar type 2 cells that are structurally and functionally like uh, type 2 cells. Uh, in, when you look at the transmission electron microscopy, you can see some lamellar bodies, and you can also uh, uh, see surfactant synthesis in a differentiated alveolar type 2 cell, but not, of course, in naive human-induced uh, pluripotent stem cells. And then when you take these cells and inject them into uh, the uh, oxygen-induced uh, BPD model in rats, these cells, you can see that many of these cells stay in the lung and they seem uh, to engraft as well, unlike the MSC or the ECFC, and they can prevent the arrest or the alveolar simplification um, shown in this um, O2 um, BPD model and also improve uh, lung function. So this is uh, where we are today in the lab. We're able to um, take a variety of um, uh, repair cells, inject them into animal models and show uh, some lung improvement. This is, of course, where we want to go tomorrow. And here it will be more, a little bit more difficult because we have to use clinical grade GMP facility grown uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, endothelial progenitor cells, or other repair cells, and um, go through rigorous um, clinical trials to show whether these cells indeed can be efficient and maybe prevent the stress of David to organize the 60th anniversary symposium of BPD. <laughs> Um, just uh, um, very briefly to focus on the importance of knowing your cell and the importance of cell manufacturing, and I think Stella will also talk about this for the, the, the exosomes, now I said the word. <laughs> um, it is important uh, to understand that everything you do uh, to um, your cell uh, starting with uh, the um, selection of your um, uh, starting material from which patient or from which donor you collect uh, the sample here, um, cord, uh, and um, to isolating these cells, culturing them, um, freezing them, and then thawing them will affect their um, efficacy and therefore will impact uh, the um, results of a clinical trial. So here is an example uh, of a very elegant uh, experiment, pyrobiosis experiments, that have uh, shown the importance of uh, young versus old stem cells and the influence of a young versus an old environment. And here these investigators show that if they put together the circulation of uh, two old um, animals, this is not very efficient for repair, as you would agree, I think. <laughs> now, if you put an older animal and a younger animal, that's already better. And there, I think all, everyone will agree there as well. And now, of course, if you have two young animals together, this is the best. <laughs> And so here we as neonatologists, we are actually in a very good position because we try to use young cells derived from the cord as opposed to our adult colleagues that still are uh, more focusing on bone marrow derived cells. And we inject these young cells into a very young environment, preterm infants. So we may have an advantage over, over our adult colleagues for um, organ regeneration or, or disease prevention. So this is the overall conclusion. Um, one important message is that you have to know your cell. Of course, there are different types of uh, repair cells. Here I mentioned three. There's also the human um, amnion, epithe uh, amnion epithelial cells from the amniotic membrane uh, that seems to have similar properties as mesenchymal stromal cells. And the phase one trial has just been finished in Australia. Um, it is important to um, identify reliable and reproducible potency assays that can predict before you inject these cells into your animal model or in a patient uh, how well this cell is working. And of course, this will help us to optimize the manufacturing process. Uh, 
And then we have to perform methodologically robust preclinical studies in relevant animal model because they will form the rationale for going into clinical trials. And we have to admit that some questions can only be answered in well-designed clinical trials, and the time is certainly ripe, at least for mesenchymal stromal cells, to go into phase one um, studies uh, to answer feasibility and uh, safety questions. And then, of course, um, these um, trials will lead to um, phase two trials, but also to further um, Benstride research. And with this, I would like to thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions.